Hi, the mark of the beast is really important that everyone understands what it is. The mark of the beast is going to be a RFID chip, which stands for radio frequency ID. And it goes in your hand or in your forehead. Uh, the governments are going to all probably after the very first uh, big catastrophe. And uh, this is this has been in the Bible in Revelation 13, 16. And it tells also in Revelation 9 through 11, it tells you that you will wind up in the lake of fire if you take this chip. So for all the people out there who are left when this comes out, and I have no idea if it's going to come out before people are raptured, after people are raptured, but whether you're... Uh, believe in once saved, always saved, or whether you believe in what I think it's called worship salvation. If you're stuck here at that time, absolutely do not take that chip. It will change your DNA. It will make you unacceptable to Jesus. He will not take you uh, after you uh, die. So whatever you do, you do not take that chip. It is basically giving your to Satan if you take it. Anyhow, I think everyone should know that. And that's the point of no return. That is the one thing that you cannot come back from once you receive that chip. And you guys have to read Revelations in order to know that. It describes the whole thing. I heard it like because it, it changes your DNA. Yeah. Yeah. That you also like make it almost impossible for you to come out to the Lord. That's why you run. I believe that's correct. Right. I think what they're... I remember back many, many years ago, I saw a program on television, and what this program uh, was showing was that they were experimenting with people trying to get rid of the God area of the brain. And I thought at that time, because I wasn't you know, really understanding much about religion at that time, and I thought, why would they do such a thing? Well, now I know, because the second they, they change your DNA, they're also going to get rid of the God portion of your brain, and you're not going to want to have anything to do with God. You're going to be basically a zombie for Satan at that point, mm -hmm. and you won't care about much of anything. Mm -hmm. So you get that chip, you could kiss it goodbye, and you'll probably be turning in your relatives, turning in anyone else because they will have your mind at that point. Also, it's a tracker on the body. So anyhow, do not take that chip. I don't care what you believe. I don't care uh, how you believe it. God will not take you if you take that chip. Mm -hmm. If you look in the King James Version where they say, and the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast. So when they say grievous sore, they didn't say sores, they said singular sore. Right. Exactly. And that's where that chip is. Exactly. Very, very smart. <laughs> you know. So if we go to Revelation 13, 16, and he compels all alike, both small and great, both the rich and the poor, both the free and slave, to be marked with an inscription stamped on their right hand or on their forehead. Now, the word stamped or uh, put on, it could either be a tattoo or an injected RFID chip. And you, a tattoo can have an RFID chip in it, by the way. That's right. So that, so that no one will have power to buy or sell unless he bears the stamp mark inscription that is the name of the beast or the number of his name. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, that's uh, the 13 through actually 17, uh, 13, 16 through 17. And if you go to Revelation 14, 9, and then another angel, a third called him saying with a mighty voice, whoever pays homage to the beast and his statue and permits the beast stamp mark inscription to be put on his forehead or on his hand. He
he too shall have to drink the wine of God's indignation and wrath poured undiluted into the cup of his anger, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angel and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no respite, no pause, no intermission, no rest, no peace, day and night. They who pay homage to the beast and to his image and whoever receives the stamp of his mark uh, of his name upon him. Basically, you'll wind up in the lake of fire is what mm -hmm. it boils down to. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible, by the way, if anyone yeah. uh, cares. Uh, it's a really good Bible in the sense that it sort of explains words. So if you it's the stamp, then it, it has in parentheses marked, inscribed, etc. So you know what else it means in Greek and Hebrew. Mm -hmm. I, I warn all of you not to take this mark. It's very important, and it's going to be coming up pretty dang soon. So, so be careful, beware. And you also have to remember to believe what God's Word says. If God was able to bring water out of a rock, when we don't have water in this day and age, or the water's been polluted or poisoned, mm -hmm. we have to have the faith to pray together and ask God to bring forth the water for his people. Right. We have to read okay. up on the miracles God did back in the day so that we know what to ask for today. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So read up on the miracles that he's able, he can do any miracle. But the more you read up on, the more your imagination will be able to fly when you run into an impossible situation or an impasse. And you can say, you know, Lord, I know you can do so and so. We need this. Do that, please. You run out of gas. Lord, take this orange juice that I have in the car and turn it into gasoline. Got to trust God, not man. Bible says some trust in chariots, some trust in this, some trust in that. I will trust in the Lord. Got to trust in the name of the Lord. Everything you pray, you pray in the name of Jesus, because that's what adds power. That gives it that kickstart. Animal comes running after you, some alley cat or some some mountain lion comes charging you in a city street because all 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 things are going crazy. You bind that bad boy. You holler, I bind you in the name of Jesus. And stand your ground. He ain't going to touch you. The name of Jesus is more powerful than a bullet, y'all. But you got to know it. You got to get it in your spirit. How are you going to know what you're not reading? So I'm glad you reminded me, Lynn, of what was on the news because I'm going to go to the store and load up on all the stuff I need and I know what I plan to get so that Good. if something happens and you can't leave the house, I'm situated right here behind my closed doors. You know, Great. you do what's in your power to do. After that, you depend on God's, on, on God's miraculous working power, but you don't just do nothing. So whatever's in your power to do, do. You prepare the best you can. Also, the FEMA camps are going to be set up to insert this mark in you. So they're going to tell you that you can go and get food and shelter and this and that because things are going to get really rough. And when that happens, you steer away from the FEMA camps, people. Do not go to them. That is where they're going to be set up to, to insert these chips. At first, it may be helpful. voluntary, but it won't be for long. It'll be helpful to it first. And when word gets around and everybody in desperation is flocking in, like, hey, okay, they're coming now. Here come the cattle. Get the brands ready. And I'm going to tell you, there will be a lot of born-again Christians. I hate to say it. I don't want to see it. I don't want it to be. But there are going to be a lot that depend on their senses rather than what the word says. And they're not going to be strong in faith. They're going to depend on their belly. Their belly will determine the, the, the choices they make. And their belly will determine their outcome. And being driven by appetite, a lot of them will take the mark for an immediate 
gratification, an immediate fix, knowing the ramifications, hoping it's not really true, but knowing what the word says. It's going to surprise you how many people are going to turn on the Lord in a moment of desperation instead of turning to him. See, when you turn to God in a moment of desperation, that's when the miracles begin. But many human beings run the wrong way when it gets hard and it gets scary and it gets dark and things go bump in the night. Then they turn tail and run away from God to the very people that are there to destroy them because they got the milk, the butter, and the honey. They got the meat and the bread. They go to God. Ain't no food sitting up in that Bible. It's just a bunch of pages. So they're not sure if God's really going to do anything. And they don't put him to the test to find out. But it's when your back is up against the wall. That's when the miracles happen. We just got to get ready now. Right. And take our, our salvation very, very seriously. Like, it's not a joke. Right. Mm -hmm.